The Secret Island of Dr. Quandary, developed and published by MECC in 1992 for computers of the IBM PC compatible and Macintosh flavors. And no, this has nothing to do with the Island of Dr. Brain from the same year, although similar, and I've certainly mixed the two up before. This one was created by many of the same people as MECC's previous hits, including The Oregon Trail and Number Munchers. So right off the bat, it had a high standard to live up to. Although judging by these floppy disks, my standards are already met, seeing as it's distributed on both high density 5.25 inch and double density 3.5 inch diskettes. Mm, more floppies are good floppies. And you should definitely look at the manual to see what you need to do. Although calling this a manual is a bit of a stretch here. This thing is grumpy. It just tells you to play the darn game already and get off its lawn. Can you just tell me how to solve a puzzle? No. That's it. Not even any hints as to how to, just no. I like that. The secret island of monkey Dr. Moreau Quandary begins with some logos and funky music, but a suspicious lack of any secrets, islands, or doctors. This confusion continues with a carnival clearly showing a carny continuously calling for compliance. You move closer and are offered a free game of Troggle Shoot, a shooting gallery where you take out the enemies from number munchers without any need for mathematical skills. Oh yeah, now this is quality edutainment. All the entertainment without the education. Once you win, you're given the choice of three creepy dolls as a reward, named B. Ginner, D. Fecult, and O. D. Nary. If you find these punerific difficulty levels to be annoying, then you may as well T-earn back now, because the game thrives on this stuff. Pick your pleasure, and surprise surprise, your soul is sucked out of you and placed into the doll, and then you're teleported to a secret island designed to drive you insane. Uh, actually that is a surprise, whoa. From this point on, you're in control of this brightly colored sentient Cupid doll thing, and it's your task to get back to the carnival to reclaim your human body. That's actually a pretty freaking awesome concept for an edutainment game. I approve. So it turns out that Dr. Quandry has a fetish for logic puzzles, and the only way to escape the island is to complete all of them, each of which drops an ingredient for a magic potion. It plays a bit like a point-and-click adventure game in that you point and click to interact. You've got an inventory and you have to solve puzzles, but it's really just a collection of logic and math-based mini-games loosely tied together by a partially randomized map. While the island is a bit creepy at first, with the Doc himself appearing all predator-like in the bushes, it's just a distraction and the 12 puzzles are your true foes. So we're gonna talk about them. First up is Let's Make a Door, which is a spin on the age-old Tangram puzzle. You are shown a shape, which the Doc then breaks apart like a maniac. Use the mouse to manipulate each piece to recreate the initial shape. The catch is that none of the shapes can overlap, so the initial obvious layout is almost never the final solution. And I love Tangram puzzles, although personally I would not mind if the three on offer here were a bit trickier. Next up is Ape the Ape, and this is a game of Music Match or Simon. The ape plays a series of notes, and all you need to do is play them back in the right order. What makes this a little different is that you're actually mixing a cup of psychedelic coffee or something, and you have to time the drops to fall into the mug speeding by. The timing is a bit weird here, but thankfully mixed drops don't count against you, only incorrect drops. Next, you have Numlock, which has nothing to do with the Numlock key on the keyboard, as it tells you in a fourth wall breaking moment. Sir Edmund Pillory here is locked up and knows the combination, but he won't tell you directly because he's a jerk. The combination is composed of three unique numbers, but the only way to figure it out is by Sir Pillory's expressions. A frown means nothing is correct, a wink means you've entered a correct number but it's in the wrong spot, and a big smile means that you've entered a correct number in the right spot. Of course, which number he's referring to is up for you to deduce, accomplished by using the process of elimination. Next is the Tire Tower at the Island Dump, and this is a Tower of Hanoi clone. You've got three poles and one set of tires, and the objective is to get the tires on the correct pole in the proper order. And of course, you can only move one tire at once, and you can never place a bigger tire on top of a smaller one. Oh, and you have a limited number of moves to do all this, so you have to choose each move wisely. 
The next puzzle isn't really a puzzle at all, and is actually one of the island's few dexterity challenges. This is called Acid Test. Something that the developers at Mech maybe should have been subjected to when making Dr. Quandry. Anyway, the goal is to get the glass of green gas on the opposite side of the room without getting eviscerated by fire and lasers. Once you get it, head back. That's it. Kinda lame. Tunnel Vision is up next, and this is just an annoying maze. This one makes it strange to play by including both a first-person view and an overhead view simultaneously. The first-person window takes precedence, which means the position of the arrow on the map view is tied to the first-person view rather than the arrow key directions like you would expect. Ugh. The Disc Appear game is much better, and this is a super radical 90s take on the classic game of Nim. Gnarly surfer girl over there has a bunch of lame CDs hanging around, and whoever ends up with the final CD loses. Here you can remove any number of discs from a row on your turn, but you can only remove them from one row at a time. It's a game of anticipating all your opponent's possible moves, and is mathematically strategic bliss. Next is Tadpult, and this is probably the most adventure game-like puzzle on the whole island. You've got a catapult that can shoot either stones or popcorn, and there's a pterodactyl sitting beside a giant frog statue. Obviously, both of them are hungry, so you have to knock down a bug with the stone, put the bug in the catapult, shoot it into the frog statue to feed it and open the gate, then toss the popcorn at the pterodactyl. Makes perfect sense. You've also got this Tax Factor game with a Leprechaun Elmer Fudd tax collector. Definitely one of the trickier puzzles. Here you've got to end up with more tokens than the other guy, but the only way to do this is to eliminate the numbered stars by their factors. Anything you don't eliminate goes to the tax collector, so you need to be careful which stars you take out, factoring in the fact of the factor factor. Finally, there's this music game called Headstrong Hop, which is another dexterity and timing-based challenge. Line yourself up between the notes on the music sheet, and I mean exactly line yourself up, and knock the notes and rests into the music above. If you're off by even a pixel, they'll just fly away, and the saxophone will have to keep blaring notes out of his nutsack. And yeah, once you've completed all 12 puzzles, you'll be able to mix together the ingredients you've gathered into this witch's brew and teleport back to the carnival via this trippy cutscene. Frick, what a bizarre and quirky game. I like it. It's got educational value for sure, but it doesn't shove anything down your throat, which is what you'd expect in a game by Mech, and I have no idea what compelled them to make something so offbeat compared to their previous titles, but it pleases me that they did. And it's also not too weird, unlike some games for kids that I've played where I truly question the sobriety and mental stability of its creators. The Secret Island of Dr. Quandry is a unique little title, even though it makes use of relatively ancient puzzles that you can get any number of other places. It's the total package that makes this enjoyable even today, since other than the extreme use of dithering and that CD puzzle, its aesthetics and challenges are timeless enough to make you question its age. Sadly, it's pretty hard to find now, so grab it if you ever run across a copy, especially boxed. However you can get it, though, I would say give it a shot, because even as an adult, I find it to be both engaging and entertaining in a way that few similar games match. And if you enjoyed this edutainment review, then, well, this is the month for them here on LGR. April has edutainment reviews every single Friday, and I also do other videos on Mondays, and, you know, that, that's all the way through the year, not just April. It'd be kind of weird if I only did videos in April. Nope, I do them all the time, so you can subscribe to be notified of when those occur. There's also Twitter and Facebook and Patreon if you would like to interact with me and all that kind of social stuff, as well as support the show and get some cool perks along the way. And as always, thank you very much for watching Like Dr. Quandry in the Bushes.